Hi friends, welcome back. So today for our read out story, I have a special one. It's a pocket for corduroy. Now there is a story that's just called corduroy that we'll have to get to eventually, but this one I thought was a little more special, so I brought it in first. It's by Don Freeman. Late one summer afternoon, Lisa and her mother took their laundry to the laundromat. Lisa carried along her toy bear, corduroy. The laundromat was a very busy place at this hour. Now, Corduroy, you sit right here and wait for me, Lisa said. I'm going to help with our wash. Corduroy waited patiently. Then he suddenly perked up his ears. Lisa's mother was saying, be sure to take everything out of your pockets, Lisa dear. You don't want your precious things to get all wet and soapy. Pockets? said Corduroy to himself. I don't have a pocket. He slid off the chair. I must go find something to make a pocket out of, he said. And he began to look around. First he came to a pile of fancy towels and washcloths. But nothing was the right size or color. Then he saw a huge stack of colorful clothes in a laundry bag. There ought to be something in there to make a pocket out of, he said. Without hesitating, he climbed inside the bag, which was filled with pieces of wet laundry. The dampness didn't bother Corduroy in the least. This must be a cave, he said. I've always wanted to live in the dark cool cave. Later, when Lisa looked for her bear, he was gone. Oh, mommy, she cried. Corduroy isn't here where I left him. I'm sorry, honey, said her mother, but the laundromat will be closing soon and we must be getting home. Lisa did not want to leave without Corduroy, but her mother insisted. You can come back tomorrow, she said. I'm sure you will find him. As they left, a young man wearing an artist's beret was taking his wet laundry out of a bag, the very bag Corduroy had discovered. Before he knew it, Corduroy was being tossed together with all the sheets, shirts, shorts, and slacks. Inside the dryer, but just as the artist was shutting the glass door, Corduroy tumbled out onto the floor. How in thunder did that bear ever get mixed up with my things? The artist wondered. Poor Corduroy was damp all over. The least I can do for him is give his overalls a good drying, said the man. He unbuttoned Corduroy's shoulder straps and put his overalls in the dryer. Corduroy grew dizzy as he watched the clothes spinning around. But the artist became inspired. This would make a wonderful painting, he said as he took a sketch pad out of his pocket and began drawing the swirling colors. I can hardly wait to get back to my studio. Finally, the dryer stopped whirling and the man gathered up all his clothes. Then he helped Corduroy put on his warm, dry overalls all at once. The manager of the laundromat called, Closing time! Everybody, out! Corduroy was gently placed on top of a washing machine. I wonder who that bear belongs to, said the artist as he was leaving. He should have his name someplace. He's too fine a fellow to be lost. As soon as the lights were turned off, Corduroy began his search again. He was surprised to see something white glowing in the dark. Maybe it's snow, he said. I've always wanted to play in the snow. He accidentally tipped over the open-lidded box and suddenly he was covered with soft, slippery soap flakes. Gradually, Corduroy began to slip and slide. Oh, what fun, he said with a smile. 
I've always wanted to ski down a steep mountainside. He's having quite the adventure. He landed paws first in an empty laundry basket. This must be a cage, he said, peeking through the bars. I've never wanted to live inside a cage like a bear in the zoo. But by now, Corroy felt drowsy. And soon he nodded off to sleep. Next morning, when the manager came to open the laundromat, there was Lisa waiting. I left something here yesterday, she exclaimed. May I look around? Certainly, said the manager. My customers are always leaving things. Lisa was searching under the chairs and in back of the washing machines when she heard the manager call her. Is this what you're looking for, senorita? Yes, yes, he's my best friend, shouted Lisa. She reached in and picked Corduroy out of the basket. So this is where you've been, you little rascal, she said. It's time I took you home. Lisa thanked the manager and ran down the street, holding Corduroy tightly in her arms. I thought I told you to wait for me, she said. Why did you wander away? I went looking for a pocket, Corduroy said. Oh, Corduroy, why didn't you tell me you wanted a pocket, asked Lisa. That very morning, Lisa sewed a pocket on Corduroy's overalls. And here's a card I've made with your name on it for you to keep tucked inside, she said. I've always wanted a purple pocket with my name tucked inside said Corduroy, as he and Lisa nuzzled noses. Aw, and look at his brand new pocket. It's little patterns with purple and white right there on his side. What a good story. I like Corduroy. He gets in some fun adventures. All right, thanks for joining me today on the uh, storybook read aloud, and I'll see you next time. Bye. All right, friends, so for today's activity, I'm gonna show you how to make a rain stick. Now, a rain stick doesn't actually make rain or have rain, but it just kind of sounds like the raindrops falling on the ground. So I'm using things that I have around the house. This was the tube from inside a paper towel roll. So as soon as you run out of a paper towel roll, you're more than welcome to make one of these. You're going to need aluminum foil. I just brought the whole box, but it's that shiny silver stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out a piece. And it doesn't matter, it's just, kind of guess what size you're gonna use. You do need a little bit of rice. This isn't cooked, it's just dry rice and I have a little itty bitty bit of it. And then tape, because we gotta close off the two ends of our tube once we get it together. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our aluminum foil and I'm gonna kind of roll it all up into one little snake, but then I'm gonna twist it so it looks kind of like a spring. So I'm not sure you can hear me over it, so let's see. All right, there's my aluminum foil snake. And now I'm gonna make it <clears throat> more like a spring. I think the fastest way to do that is just wrap it around this a little bit, take it off. So there's my start on it being springy, but it's gotta be able to fit inside, so it's still a little too big. So now I'm gonna make it a little closer together. And what this is, is when the rice goes through it, it should bounce all over the place and back and forth and make a bunch of racket as it goes through. So let me make sure this fits in there. Ooh, look at perfect. It goes from end to end. So now I need to close one side before I put in the rice. I'm just using masking tape. You can use whatever tape you have. You could even put a piece of paper here first if you want to. But I'm gonna cover the end. And then one more to wrap around it and make sure it all stays on there nice. What's nice about this kind of craft is you could wrap your rain stick in whatever you want. You could color it and decorate it any way you want. So then it'll be a very unique craft that you made just for yourself. Okay, so this side is all closed off, but this side is still open. So let's get that a little bit in there. And I'm gonna take all my rice, and I'm probably gonna spill a whole bunch, but I'm gonna pour it inside the tube. Oh, I was right. I'm spilling it everywhere again. Oh, you 
kind of hear how it's going to work. I don't know if I could pick all these up, so I might just leave them for right now. Okay. Now, before I turn it over to listen to all the noise, I need to close this side. So I'm going to do the same thing I did with the tape. So I'm going to go ahead and get a little piece here. Get another piece over it going the other direction. And then one more piece, just like I did the other side, just so I know it's gonna work. And I'll just wrap it around to hold all that stuff down. Push down, make sure it's nice and sticky. Now hopefully none of my rice falls out. You ready? Listen. You hear how it's all falling back and forth? So the rice is sliding through next to all of that aluminum foil and it takes its time because that's a bounce, 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 bounce all the way down. So you're gonna hear a bunch of rain the whole time. And kind of give it a tap and make sure it all gets through. All right, so you can go ahead and color yours, you can decorate it, paint it, whatever you wanna do. But now you have your own little rain stick craft. It even works as a rattle, I guess. All right, and I'll see you next time. Bye.